Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a procedural graffiti in Houdini. So it starts with a few lines. We are going to warp those and then we are going to um, define the direction towards those curves and ramp them with a gradient. Then we will put a color on each segment for each curve and then we will split this up by the color difference. So this is what this looks like in Houdini and you can see the node tree is comparably simple. So we should be able to create this ourselves. Let's start, start off with a grid and make sure to activate the wires. And first of all, we only need a one by one grid and probably not as many lines. We will just keep the columns. This would be roughly the amount of characters later on and we don't need that many subdivisions. Maybe five or seven is enough. I also find it a little nicer to make them smaller like so. And then we can jitter them to get all sorts of crazy shapes. Make sure to reduce the scale, especially in height. And this would be an interesting slider to get lots of variations. Next we would resample those lines and set them to yeah, very, very small segments and set it to subdivision curves so we get round shapes. Next thing we want to do is we want to create a grid in the background and again make this one by one and dial in the size so it's roughly fitting. You can activate the curves and just make this appear rather similar. I make this one by 0.25 and now I have to dial in some subdivisions so if we make this 41 then this 11, then this should be halfway okay. And maybe it's easier for us to scale one or the other thing. So I would just scale the characters or the curved lines, maybe like so. Now, of course, we need way more subdivisions on our grid. So we can just start off with roughly 100 by 400 and you can still play around with this later on. Now comes the important step. We will use a VOP. We can set it to primitives. And what we want to do is we want to basically make every point on this grid aware of its direction towards its closest curve. So inside the VOP you would first of all um, ask for the closest curve, which is done by XYZ dist. And what X, XYZ dist wants to know is our current position towards the second input. This is where our curves come in. And it returns the distance, which we can map real quick. So that would be the distance. You can see the dark parts are our curves and it's fading out the further it gets away. What else would we like to know? Uh, what we get in return is the primitive number and the UVs. So luckily there's another node called primitive attribute, which is exactly taking in those values. Like we want the second input for our file. We would like to know the position and it wants to know UVs and a primitive number. So let's pipe this into the color. So you can see now the position of each um, point or yeah, towards this curve. It looks a bit like cells. So this will be definitely interesting. But we don't really want the position of this primitive. 
What we'd rather like to know is the direction towards our current position. So what we can do is we can subtract the current position, uh, excuse me, the position of the curve against our current position and normalize this. Normalizing means we put this vector to unit length so that we can do later on all sorts of uh, mathematical calculations. So what you see here is the direction towards the curve and you can see this nicely radiating around the tips of each curve. So this will be um, quite interesting later on and also if you don't like the colors we can change those. And these harsh borders are basically the step from one curve to another. So this way we have segments. Now what you can tell by the colors is uh, that we got a range from minus 1 to 1 on the x and z component and the second component is empty. So there is a nice way to turn this vector into float values called Aten arctangent and it's taking in the x and y components of our vector. So you would vector to float this so we can access the um, y component or rather if you look down here this is the x direction this is the z direction so you would pipe in z into y and x into x and that way we should get a back a grayscale value so it's just one float value ranging from pi to minus pi which we can convert with a fit range node to minus dollar pi up to dollar pi mapped to the range of 0 to 1. So now you can see here in the geometry spreadsheet that we have the range uh, mapped to from 0 to 1. Alright great, what are the next steps? So you would just use a ramp parameter to convert this to a color. So if you just put this in between you can go up and now choose whatever every color you like for example from red to yellow of course we want to bring in our unique color so um, it's probably more interesting to just return this and just say I would like this fading to repeat so basically we want this to go from white over black to white again so this would be our brightness controls. You can also think about lifting the black up a little. And then we would like to have a color for each segment, which can be created randomly based on the primitive number. So you have the primitive ID here and you would just randomize this and get a 3D vector or a 3D color out of it. And this color will be multiplied with this um, ramp. So you would just say mult pipe in the color we have here and we should get out this. Now we can just overview this. You may want to have a look at this. It's fairly simple and then when you go up you can increase the resolution if you like. And also play around with the random values again just to get some nicer shapes maybe. And also these will change drastically if you change the amount of um, segments here. Or the divisions for that matter. It's a bit of a, a playful thing really and quite hard to art direct but it still gives a nice result if you invest a bit of time. Great, now comes the trick into play and uh, what we'll do is we will going to um, cut this grid into different um, 
shapes so we can use the primitive split and what the primitive split is doing is it's um, taking or analyzing a value such as uh, the color and splitting it up by a tolerance value so you cannot tell right away but now um, at certain borders this will be split up and we can visualize this by exploding it so what this should do if we don't scale it too much is basically cut this into pieces so you can define here by the scale how much it will be spread apart and um, now it works like that if you put the tolerance rather high you will get large pieces which are only segmented if they are really differing a lot but around this radial gradients it will not uh, cut it up much so now if we reduce this to say 0.01 these gradients will be split up like crazy depending on which value we've chosen and we can go even below 0.01 and then we should see it gets um, split up even more like this now that's pretty much all you'll need um, again think about pretty much everything we did here and play around with all the values and you will get a nice kind of um, yeah, procedural curve art that may up, uh, end up looking like this or maybe like this. Thank you.